Hello traders, Gary Wagner here, just about 11.15 in Honolulu, 4.15 in New York. It is Thursday, January the 12th, 2017, and this is the Daily Report for Gold and Silver. Following Donald Trump's first press conference yesterday, we are still under the effects of the repercussions from some of his words with markets going through tremendous knee-jerk reactions and some trends which developed really at the end of last month, beginning of this month, seem to be still intact. I'm speaking specifically about uh, safe haven assets such as gold and silver, as well as the US dollar. Gold rose well above $1,200 in trading overseas last night, actually trading to a high of 1207 my sense is that effectively once it broke above 1200 it hit a, a number of stops in the market that's what moved it up to about 1207 and profit taking which i believe came in quickly is what moved the market back down off of those highs as we look at gold right now we are looking at a market in terms of futures that is in essence unchanged trading at 1196 with a low of 1190, we already talked about the high on the day. So we're looking at a market that in essence has a net change of zero. When we look at the market in terms of spot, although the price is the same, you can see we're getting a rise of about $4.50. Nonetheless, we are looking at gold prices just shy of $1,200. Silver, also under that umbrella effect, as we witness the market trade to a high of 1702, currently trading at uh, 1680, and that's down about two, two and a half cents on the day, again, in essence, unchanged. So to say that the effect of words spoken by Donald Trump during his first press conference since July of last year moved the markets and mattered is an absolute understatement. We are looking at a simple bar chart each bar representing a half an hour of trading, a very, very short-term chart. And the reason I'm pulling this up is to really illustrate the kind of range we have seen over the last couple of days and the effects that various statements made by Donald Trump had in terms of the market itself. Now, you can see the beginning of yesterday's activity. That's the 11th. This, of course, marks the beginning of the 12th. So you have overseas trading that comes in to play right in here. And here's what we're looking at. Just prior to the press conference itself, you had gold trading pretty steady, just below, what, 1190 per ounce. Now, as statements came out and during that press conference, you had a tremendous dip in the market in which we saw gold prices fall to approximately 1177. And then as you can see, we've got what, about a four hour block of time in extreme recovery and then a small correction. Now, this all taking place, as I said, in about a four-hour block. Now, the press conference at this point is over. And now, traders are beginning to digest the information that they've just heard and try to make sense out of it. We saw equities markets really uh, move from being effectively up 100 points in terms of Dow Jones Industrial Average to then down uh, 100 points to recover modestly and almost go back and see the gains uh, that were exhibited prior to a speaking return into market price. Now, take a look at this. During the afternoon session, we saw a steady, steady move to the upside, uh, really flirting with $1,200 per ounce. You get that right here. And as soon as it hit that 1200 over the next hour in trading, and that's these two bars right here, what we witnessed was a little bit of backfill in the market, but then whether it was stops being hit, we had a tremendous spike to the upside, moving to the intraday high above 1200, 1207. We had some consistency in terms of pricing. And in fact, as I looked at the market trade last night, I believed quite honestly that these highs might in fact hold. That wasn't to be the case because we saw the market not only drift lower, but once it broke back below 1200, and I think that that's short-term profit taking, we saw the market sell off to go to a low of about 1194, only to recover in essence unchanged on the trading day. Without a question of a doubt, tremendous gyrations in the market. And of course, traders, that's not the first time that we have seen this Trump effect 
in terms of what it has done to gold pricing, I draw your attention on our daily bar chart to the election day itself. It's easy enough to pick out because we have this extreme high as the market traded about $50 higher only to close in negative territory. But traders, we need to stand back a little bit and not focus on these gyrations that occur intraday as much as what we are seeing in terms of a daily basis in movement in gold. We still have a defined uptrend. We're still trading well above the 28-day uh, moving average. When we look at our MACD, we have those two really moving apart, which is a solid representation of a trend that still has plenty of steam. And then lastly, when we convert this to a Japanese average chart, and let's go ahead and do that now, we can certainly see and therefore conclude that this uptrend is still absolutely still intact. It still has quite a lot of steam left, and that's by virtue of the body size. There are decent body sizes. You don't get an extreme move, but we're not getting a compression of size either. And today, of course, we do have the absence of these this lower wick. We did get one yesterday, but in terms of the market itself, it's only the second occurrence of a lower wick since the market bottom back in December, December 15th, which is this pivotal doji candle right here. And traders, it is for that reason that my recommendation is to maintain our current long position in gold, maintain our current long position in silver. We're keeping our stops in play with this increased volatility. I'm a little reluctant to raise them quickly. I want to make sure that we can account for any of this extreme volatility as long as the market continues to have a high probability of moving in an advantageous way in our favor, so to speak, to higher ground. In terms of different levels that I am looking at, I had hoped when the market broke over 1,200 and traded substantially above that point that we would have 1,200 become our next level of support as opposed to resistance. And of course, that comes in right here. When we look at this longer term chart, and this of course is a weekly candlestick stick chart you can see quite easily that our next level that we want to kind of focus on is a 50 percent retracement point and that comes in at around uh 1210 above that is 1249 and 1249 is my basic exit strategy or target i believe we could see the market actually move through 1200 as we get closer and closer to inauguration day and on a technical basis if it does not stall at 1210, I believe that there's a high probability that it will move as high as 1249 in terms of pricing. Much in the same way, I am looking for silver uh, to move to higher pricing now, sitting at around 1680, 1681, but it did breach $17 per ounce at the same time that gold broke over 1200. When we look at this daily bar chart, we can see that we're well over the midpoint. And although yesterday had a pretty dramatic sell in the market, as we witnessed getting close to the upper levels of this set of channel lines and that was this of course bar right here we did get a nice recovery moving above the trading range of yesterday's activity maintain our current long positions in gold and silver of course the big mover in these markets has been the u.s dollar u.s dollar continues under pressure uh, trading off about four tenths of a percent at 101.37. And also, when we look at the equities markets, we have a continuation of the sell pressure that has just been kind of evident over the last couple of weeks. We have the Dow Jones Industrial Average at 19,000. 891. Lastly, do want to take a look at oil pricing today. And as you can see, it continues to rise now above $53 per barrel, up 81 cents per barrel, or a rise of one and a half percent. Now, as far as other markets that we follow and, and the market that is most important in terms of its correlation to precious metals pricing, obviously because we're pairing it or buying or selling against U.S. dollars, is the U.S. dollar under pressure again today, down about four-tenths of a percent and trading well below 102 at 101.38. When we look at this weekly chart, and we talked about this just a little bit 
uh, last week, and that is the fact that we can identify absolutely in terms of a candlestick pattern, a variation off a three river evening star. That came in on our weekly charts, and it also came in at the same time that we identified a three river morning star on our weekly chart patterns in gold, as well as a bullish Harami confirmation in silver. However, in the case of the dollar, the following week, we got a doji, a green candle. However, the important part of this candle is not so much color size, but it is relative range of high and low and the relationship between where the market opened and where it closed, extremely defined, extremely narrow, consolidation in the market. And this week, and this week now is almost over, we have seen uh, the dollar continue under pressure. So what we can derive from that is first, absolute resistance at approximately 103 on the dollar index. I do not believe that on a technical basis, there's a strong level of support until we get to about 100 on the dollar index, and that's still about one and a third percent away. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We'll talk to you tomorrow for the weekly wrap up and review. Bye-bye.